of all that money that you have. All of it you have to give. These are some basic rules of zakat. Of course, we will have, inshallah, tomorrow, uh, before the iftar, we'll have a, a program here talking more about zakat. So you come, you ask any questions, we'll be happy, inshallah, to answer. So, because, because it's something to be taken seriously. Just like you calculate your taxes, because you're going to be audited. You fear that you might be audited. But remember, on the Day of Judgment, you are going to be audited. It is not that somebody will be outed and somebody will not going to be audited. There will be an audit for everybody. Everybody is going to be audited. So don't hide anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot hide anything from Allah. And you have to be very careful about that. Because this is the haqqul fuqara ibn masakin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Surah Tawbah, ayah number 60, the recipients of zakah. Basic thing is, zakat is not for the rich. Zakat is for the poor. إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ فِي الرِّقَابِ وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ Eight categories are mentioned. That is, zakat is for the poor, for the needy. Poor and the needy, the difference, what is the difference between faqir and miskin? Uh, different opinions, but the main basic thing is, somebody has nothing, pauper. Somebody has something, but not enough for his basic needs. Not for luxury, but for basic needs. They come in the category of fuqara and masakin. Mu'allafatul qulub. Those who recently joined Islam, or those hard to be reconciled for Islam, they can be helped from zakat also. Zakat for those who collect the zakat. Some of their expenses can be also covered from zakat. Zakat for those who are under heavy debt and unable to pay their debt. Zakat is for those who are travelers or stranded for them, Ibn Sabil. Or generally for Sabilillah, for the cause of da'wah, for the cause of Islam, for something of basic thing, that there's some basic rule for that, then these are the things that where zakat has to be given. But you cannot give zakat to the rich, you cannot give zakat to your own children, or to your parent, or to your dependents, because you have to spend on them first. And if anything left, then you give zakat on that. And, uh, uh, but this, this one has to be very careful how to spend the zakat. The second thing that we have during the month of Ramadan is Sadaqatul Fitr, which is also wajib on those who are, who are supposed to give zakat. But Sadaqatul Fitr is different. Zakat is on the money. It is the money of the adult or is the money of a child. Even though a child's money Child is not capable to do the sarruf in his money, but his guardian has to give the zakat on his money. If somebody puts some money in the children's account, well, zakat is still due on that. Even if somebody is insane, if that some money belongs to that person, the person who is taking care of that person has to give zakat on that money. Because zakat is on the money. But sadaqatul fitr is on the persons. Sadaqatul fitr to be given on behalf of every person in your family. Head of the household should have to give the sadaqatul fitr on behalf of everyone. Generally, the calculation is about ten dollars per, per person, and should be given during the month of Ramadan before the Eid prayer. And this is, has a great meaning. The meaning is that if you give this money, it will help the poor and the needy, and they will enjoy the month of Ramadan and they will enjoy the day of Eid. The third thing that I want to speak about is the general charity. Islam also emphasizes that you help the institutions, your masjid, your school, your Islamic work that people do. And here at the Islamic society, we don't mix zakat with other things. Zakat is separate. That's why we urge you to give beyond your zakat some other charity for the sake of your institutions. This organization that is helping you, bringing you and have, alhamdulillah, this facility, providing air conditioning, water, this and that, cleaning, all of this stuff, they need some money for that. So for this reason, there has to be some charity for that. And this, everything what you give it for the cause of Allah, you will receive the reward for that. But this is also important. And this is called infaq fi sabilillah. 
It's, it's the, many times in the Quran there is a reminder that in anfiqu fi sabilillah. If you come to the prayer to prayer here, it is an obligation on you to do something so that masjid receive that. Whatever you can, give it. Every time you come, put something. Or put it as a monthly thing there for your masjid. As you have your other expenses in a similar way, put for the masjid. But you should think about it, your masjid. Because there is no other awqaf, there is nothing else, there is no other source that helps the Islamic centers, Islamic masjid here, except people. So this is, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect your money and to bless you and to enrich you in this life and in the life to come. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa waqina azab al Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. You just heard about the terrible flood in Pakistan. This is the worst flood, one of the worst floods of the human history. Almost 10% of the population of Pakistan is affected by that. About 20 million people. Many areas are submerged in water. And the people, are, they lost their homes, they, they died. It's a terrible thing. And the Secretary General of the United Nations said that you put Haiti earthquake, you put other earthquake, you put tsunami, you put all of these disasters together, and it is greater than what happened there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. We should pray. We should ask, we should repent. We should Allah, ask Allah's forgiveness, and we should do something, whatever we can. Alhamdulillah, as mentioned to you, that they had been the program, collecting uh, items, clothing, whatever you can, and then money is needed. Alhamdulillah, we did send some money from, on behalf of the Islamic society for this purpose, but we have to send more. And we, uh, we, we, we should participate. Islamic Relief is a great organization that is doing some work. We'll be having, inshallah, the fundraising program on the 4th of September. Please join that and help them. And at the same time, <coughs> there are some other Islamic centers that are <coughs> raising funds. I was just received a call from the Islamic Center of Yorba, Yorba Linda. Uh, they have started, alhamdulillah, doing some work. They sent a team there already in Pakistan, established their camp, and doing some work. May Allah bless them, reward them. Whatever, whatever work, because it's a t- it's the work needs a lot of people, a lot of volunteers. And whosoever can do something, let them do that. So please remember them in your dua. Please help them. Please do whatever you can, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more for that. Because once you help others in difficulty, you receive the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And quickly, let me mention that you know what kind of Islamophobia, the fear of Islam that is going on. A hysteria is going on today in this country, unfortunately. Because of a plan of, to build a masjid near the ground zero. It's not at ground zero two blocks, three blocks away from there. And it's not even a masjid. It is a general center for Islamic information, Islamic culture and all those things. Uh, but there are people who are creating anger and fear and all kind of things that are happening. And they say that uh, Muslims are taking over. This is what they do. They destroy a place and they build their masjid on those places. And Muslims are new Nazis, they are the supporters of Hitler, Hitler was inspired by them, and they did and all kind of rubbish, foolish ideas, hate ideas are, are coming now. 70% of Americans oppose. Not only that center, but actually the hate is growing other places. Wherever there are plans for new massages, now the people are opposing that. Muslims have to think about it carefully. Whenever, what, what to do? Of course, we are now stuck with this issue. I personally, to tell you very honestly, I personally was not in favor of this whole project. Hundred million dollar, why to spend? There could be 40, 50 massages can be established in, and there are so many poor massages in New York, they need help. But at the same time, there is a principle of freedom that is at stake. So we have to work on that. And we need support of the people. We need to talk justice, seek justice. 
But we cannot seek justice from others for ourselves unless we talk about justice for others as well. So we have to work together with other people. We have to bring better relationship, better understanding with the people. That's what we have to talk about it. And that's what we will work on. Otherwise, if you simply talk about your own rights and not about the rights of others, not about the justice of others, nobody is going to listen to us. There is something called recognition of the right and there is something called execution of rights. Sometimes people recognize the right, but they don't want to execute the rights. And that's happening. President, President Obama recognized the right of Muslims, of freedom. But the next day he said, well, maybe it's not sense. People should be sensitive about that. Next day he retracted somewhat. So, this is the situation now. Rights and the execution of rights. And that requires a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of building up relations. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on the right path. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين خصوصا على الخلفاء الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى السيدين الشهيدين أبي محمد الحسن وأبي عبد الله الحسين وعلى أمهما فاطمة الزهراء وعلى عمي المعزمان المكرمان عند الله والناس الحمزة والعباس وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم بفضلك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين ويا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم إنا نسألك العفو العافية والمعافاة الدائمة والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر فأقيموا الصلاة